Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to StansberryInvestor.com. Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside, like Riot Blockchain before it shot up 10,000%, Digital Turbine before it shot up 789%, and Overstock before it shot up over 1,000%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Chaikin. And right now you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of the 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to powergagetrial.com for your free look. Again, that's powergage trial.com for your free look. All right, let's get to our segment today. Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to stansberryinvestor.com. Our coveted Outlook 2022 series continues with another juggernaut guest. Please welcome back to the show, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and really a, a very close friend of ours here. Uh, please say hello to Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert. Uh, Danielle, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love your program. And um, by the way, how's the child? <laughs> the children, the twins, they are good. <laughs> They're keeping me uh, sane, perhaps. Um, but yes, thank you for asking. They're, they're doing well. Uh, ha we're happy to be home uh, for the holidays and we're happy to be uh, speaking with you, Robert, to get your outlook, although I don't think it's a pretty one for 2022. Okay. Uh, you've been making headlines. Everyone's covering it where you're warning people, hey, folks, brace for a major market crash here. Right. What do you bring us this Christmas, Robert? Well, you know, the reason I love you guys is because we're, I'm a hardcore gold, silver, and, you know, I'm Bitcoin and all this. I'm a hard asset guy. So it's good news for us, but it's bad news uh, for the boomers. Very bad news. And, um, What's happening is Jay Powell of the Fed is trying to push the yield curve up. But as most of you know, the real yield curve is a Euro dollar curve. It's not the Fed curve. And the Euro dollar curve went inverted. Now, every time that has happened, tragedy follows. So most of us are old enough to remember the last time that yield curve, not the last time, but an earlier time was 2007 the euro dollar euro curve in, inverted and the Fed was trying to hold it up. So the Fed's pushing it this way, but the euro dollar is going this way. And that led to the Lehman moment, 2008. So then what happened in, in uh, 2019, it inverted again, the repo market inverted, the euro dollar inverted and COVID appeared. So uh, once again, the euro dollar yield curve inverted just recently. And I'm, I'm standing alongside my friend, Jim Rickards, that this next one is gonna be the biggest of all. Now <clears throat> it's good news for some people, but horrible news for the boomers who are starting to retire. So if you're a stock market person and you're counting on the stock market to keep you alive yeah. You know, let's say, let's say you're 65 years old and you're going to live to 85, you might be in serious trouble. And I know a lot of people in that category, Robert. Can you yeah. talk a little bit more to that? Because I know so many folks saying, I'm in the stock market, it's roaring now. And they're almost placing all their eggs in that basket. Right. Let's talk about the dangers there. It's, it's, really, it's really, really horrible. Um, but it was predicted in this book here. I'm not a communist, but it's called the Communist Manifesto. And, you know, I'm just shamelessly plugging my book, The Capitalist Manifesto, which comes out in a few weeks. But this book here is only 50 pages. My book is 500 pages. But he, Marx was an idiot, but he was a smart guy. He predicted everything that's happening today in America. So he said that what's going to happen, and it's happening in this country here, is the boomers will go bust. You know, what's interesting, Robert, I, I thought of you, um, you know, in doing the research and I was listening attentively to every word that uh, Jay Powell was saying in his most recent press conference. And he kept hammering home the point of how healthy the economy is, how great. The, and I remember listening to the, to the, to the news conference, I'm turned to my husband, I'm thinking, is he living in the same world 
that I'm living in. I mean, as you know, Robert, I live in New York City. I'm passing by. I don't know how many homeless people, yeah. uh, you know, on, on my walk to the to the grocery store. Uh, it's looking worse to me. Am I am I wrong? Who's wrong here? Well, let me say it again. This book was written in 1848. It is prescient. It, it is calling exactly what's happening today, 1848 till today. So <clears throat> unfortunately, what, what uh, Marx was saying was that capitalism would destroy 50% of the population and, and sh shove them into poverty. So what happened was this book was written in 1848, 1960, I, I started studying it in 1965. I went to school in New York. I went to military school. 66, I'm in Vietnam as a student with the Merchant Marine Academy. And I could see what this book was saying coming to life. 72, I'm flying in Vietnam. I was a Marine pilot. It's my squadron patch. And then in 74, ERISA comes out. And ERISA is Employee Retirement Income Security Act, today known as a 401k. So you have all of these baby boomers who have no idea about markets. And they blindly give their money over to Wall Street, who will rip them off. I mean, I'm not against Wall Street. I'm just against corruption. They rip them off. They don't know what's going to happen. And now, exactly as Records has been saying, you know, he says the Fed, the most incompetent people going, they're telling everybody everything's going right. Whereas the euro dollar market is so much bigger than the Fed. The euro dollar market is the biggest market in the world, and it's just inverted. We're going down. You know, I'm, I'm happy you brought up Jim Rickards. Uh, he just kicked off this Outlook series, Robert. I just had him on, had an incredible conversation. One thing that struck me, um, and you know how, how much of a genius Rickards is, is he, he believes that we've actually reached peak inflation, that the worst in terms of inflation is behind us. Not sure if you agree with him there, because he, he's saying the reason that we got into this inflationary environment is not because of money that was released into the system, but because of bad policies from the Biden administration, but that we've peaked here in terms of that inflation. Do you agree? The, the, the biggest problem, again, is the euro dollar system, which is a thousand times bigger than the Fed, is crashing. Europe, Europe is going down right now. I mean, if you see the report, and this is not me speaking, this is a, a uh, the Wall Street Journal talking about it. There's so many rioting going on about this COVID stuff. People just don't want to take it anymore. The uncertainty is too high. So the, the, so the Euro dollar system is starting to go down. But, but Jim Records talks about a thing called Treffen's Dilemma. Treffen's Dilemma took place in 1944 when the US dollar became the reserve currency of the world. And what that meant was <laughs> the US dollar was screwed anyway. So one of the I'm a gold bug and a silver bug and a Bitcoin bug and all this, I just don't trust the Fed. And all these people say, oh, don't fight the Fed, you know, ride with the Fed. They're full of it. And so when, when I listen to Jim Records, it's about Treffen's dilemma. We always have to run a deficit. And now we can't run it much longer. So more than inflation or deflation is that the euro dollar market is now, as the index has inverted. Every time that has happened, something bad has happened. That's what I'm concerned about. I just want to talk to your timeline a bit because as you know, Robert, when you stick your neck out with a, with a forecast, people will come at you and be like, oh, you, you're off, you're off. You said that last month or you said that six months ago. So I respect the fact it's, look, you're really putting yourself out there when you say a forecast, right? So right. to the folks out there who say, well, Robert, you said this, you said the crash was coming in October. What's your response to them? It happened with, with um, uh, inflation going up but the thing is, it's already coming down. If you look at how uh, records, no, I, I love Jim Records, you can tell. When you look at the numbers, is that we're already in a depression. In other words, if, 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 if economy has been growing at 3%, it's only growing at 2%, that's a technical depression. And that's what he's saying in this new book, The New Depression. 
So people are watching, oh, the stock market's up, everybody's happy and all this, but everything's inverting upon us. So just recently, the euro dollar curve inverted. Every time that has happened, it was followed by Lehman Brothers and it was followed by COVID. And so this one's gonna happen again. And that's why I'm saying to people, because I'm a gold and silver and Bitcoin bug, this is a good time to get into gold and silver now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, let, let's talk about that um, because our audience loves uh, when, when you bring this up about how Robert Kiyosaki protects himself. We know you love gold. We know you love silver. We know you love Bitcoin. Um, are you completely out of, or do you aim to be completely out of cash? No, no, I'm, I have no problem with cash. I'm just saying right now, if you're a boomer, what this guy marks wrote about was that 50% of our population was shipped from, let's say, proletariat to poverty. That's what he was calling for in 1848. And when I saw 1974 come, and that's when they put us into ERISA, Employee Retirement Income Security Act, or the Defined Contribution, or the 401k, or the IRA, it shoved all of these amateurs, people with no financial education, into the stock market. And Jim Rickards and I, good friends, you can tell, but when we were kids, nobody was in the stock market. We're in the bond market. That's right. Remember that? And he says, suddenly they needed to find a way to get some stupid people into the stock market. (laughs) So they got the 401k and all the boomers are in it. So we shifted from defined benefit pension plan. So Ford Motor Company has a defined benefit. So Ford Motor stood behind the retirement. Yeah. And then when I went to, in 74, I shifted to defined contribution. And I've talked to Jim about this. I said, oh my God, that was the beginning of the end at that point, because it was pushing all of us, all us boomers into the stock market, not the bond market. You know, what's interesting, uh, Robert, I think people's frustration with gold, like you and I obviously understand gold. Um, But, you know, some investors I speak to say, you know, I just don't want to get it, get gold. I don't like gold because I can't see any returns in it. They want that instant gratification that, of course, the stock market can give you, that Bitcoin can give you. And as you and I both know, well, gold moves at a different pace. So what do you say to those folks out there who, who don't see how they could get wealthy with gold? Or maybe it's not about that. Is it just about wealth preservation? Correct. It's, it's just one of the tenets of what is money to store up value. And you and I always have this conversation. I'm not buying gold because I like gold. I buy gold because I don't trust the Fed. And you know, and, and these people actually listening to the Fed, you've got to be kidding me. The 700 PhDs, that's 700 people like my poor dad running to be Ponzi scheme going. <laughs> I just don't trust the Fed. You know, what's his name? Ron Paul doesn't trust the Fed. <laughs> you know, if, if, you, if you look at, if you understand this guy here, the Fed is actually a Marxist organization. You know who else doesn't trust the Fed, Robert? Your friend, and I brought him on because of you, G. Edward Griffin. We had a great yeah. conversation. He really doesn't <laughs> trust the Fed. Yeah. And, and, and I would, I would all you bo- old guys like me, you boomers, I mean, pay attention. Look, I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. But this book here about a communist, I read this book when I was 1965, 1966. I'm in Vietnam. I'm seeing everything these guys are saying coming true. 1972, I'm flying in Vietnam. I flew behind enemy lines to buy gold because it was illegal for Americans to own gold in 1972. I walk up to a little Vietnamese gold seller and she, I said, and so gold was now $50 an ounce, 50 bucks an ounce from 35. And I said to the little Vietnamese woman, I want a discount. She looked at me like I was an idiot. She says, are you kidding me? What school would you go to, you idiot? She says, spot. And I didn't know what spot meant. <laughs> so this little Vietnamese woman was one of the best teachers I ever had. She says, you're an idiot. You don't even know what spot is. <laughs> Easy. Today, you would say you're hired to her. Uh, Let me ask you this, Bitcoin, because, you know, you've been very vocal how you've embraced gold, you've embraced Bitcoin. Um, 
how do you manage the volatility of Bitcoin when there's talk of, hey, it could correct down back down to, to 20,000? Um, how do you control the panic? Well, the doubt, Danielle, we all know your profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. So my my strike price for uh, Bitcoin is 6,000. So I think today is about 40,000. So I'm selling the money. So as my rich dad said to me, your profit's not made when you buy, not when you sell, it's made when you buy. And so you always want to be early into the market. It's the same as, you know, when I bought gold, it was $50 an ounce. I still have, I, I bought, a, bought my first Kruger in, in 1972 in Hong Kong because it's illegal for Americans to own gold, which I thought was interesting. And that little Vietnamese woman yelling at me about spot and she wouldn't give me a discount. Everybody wants a discount. <laughs> I'm going, what is going on here? So the issue is people don't know what money is. Mm. That's the problem. We have no financial education in school. And I've made a fortune in Rich Dad, Poor Dad saying that we should have financial education in our school. But we don't. We don't even know what money is. So Bitcoin going up and down, I don't really care because my entry point is 6,000. It's always your entry point. And how many ounces do you have? How many coins do you have? But also, if it's going to crash, it's when you get out. The stock market is a, you know, it's not an all-time high, but it's pretty high. It, it adjusted last week. I, I feel for my baby boom friends. They're, they're going to get hammered. The, the reason I brought up cash to you before, Robert, is because I'm seeing a trend, and I brought it on in other, other interviews, where I'm seeing more and more experts and, and people who are trying to get out of the banking system completely. You know, you talk of the mistrust of the Fed, but there's also this fear that the banking system will collapse. And if they were in cash or whatever percentage, they're converting it, you know, into Bitcoin, into gold, into silver. I mean, would you advocate to be completely out of the banking system or do you think you should be a bit liquid in cash? Well, I got taken down for this one. You know, I said, I said, if the, if, if, if the US dollar crashes, you want bullets. <laughs> That's, you know, Danielle, it, it's, it's as Jim Records says and Breffin says, and everybody's saying, what is real today? What is real? You know, and, and I think really that's kind of the question. So gold and silver are God's men. There's no counterparty risk to gold and silver. They're elements of the periodic table. So God is the uh, counterparty to gold and silver. Bitcoin is the network system, same as Ethereum. It's the network. It's outside the control of the Fed. And so when people say that the Fed's going to shut down Bitcoin and all that, it's possible. They did that in China. So anything's possible today. So I would just listen to idiots like me and go, well, maybe I should do something different than count yeah. on my Apple stock keeping going up. Yeah. Yeah. Um you know, the theme of this year's outlook, we, we went with the tipping point because I feel that, you know, with the inflationary environment we find ourselves in, the largest asset uh, buyback program coming to an end um, in history, uh, interest rate hikes that are coming, you know, we really are on the verge of some tipping point. Now, you, you, you speak of how you're worried for your baby boomer friends. If I ask you, Robert, you know, as we're about to head into 2022, you mentioned the market crash. What are other concerns um, that you have that you'd like to warn our viewers about? Well, obviously, civil unrest. That's a serious, serious problem. I mean, uh, my friend got mugged right by my office every day. And I live in a, I have a very, I'm in Scottsdale. I mean, yeah. that's as lily white as it gets. And uh, in my property, I, I mean, I, I have two properties. We have our own private police force. So if you don't have your own private police force, that's a consideration. And, and, I, and I talked to the private police force guy because he's an off duty police officer with attachment to the headquarters. He says right now that they brought in a new teacher to train police officers. So I, I forget the numbers now, but let's say they need 50 new police officers a year. They only have 17 in the academy. So the attrition rate is accelerating but they bring in the school teacher to teach police officers how not to do in the Marine Corps is called pugil, pugil, how not to use your fist. 
So they're training police officers to try and kind of talk people out of killing people or something. I don't know what they're doing. But our problem is our education system. It's Marxist. Postmodernist education is Marxist. And so that's really the corruption is in our education system. And I love my poor dad. He was a great, he was a smart guy, but he was a Marxist. He's not a capitalist. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because you have a PhD and you make a lot of money doesn't mean you're a capitalist. So you look at you look at most of these people on Hollywood and all that, they make millions of dollars, but they're not capitalists, they're Marxists. Yeah. And they get that distinction. And I hate to say it again, but this guy said it all in this book. 1848, he was talking about America today. They talked, he talked about stage one and stage two. Stage one was when capitalism shifted to socialism. That happened when we had Social Security, Obamacare, everybody's on welfare now. So socialism is now complete in America. Stage two began in January of 2020. I'm not Republican or Democrat, but when Trump's election was stolen, that was the start of communism. Stage two. And since then they have COVID passports, they have, you know, defund the police, um, no, that they get released right away and all this stuff. All of this is part of stage two. And what Marx said in this book, stage two, is opposite of stage one. In other words, the violence is about to begin. And that's what he warned about. So if you look at history, the communists have murdered hundreds of millions of people. So it's about to start. All right. This is a family show. <laughs> let's 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 end with some good cheer, if you have any, Robert. Um, some optimism for the folks. I mean, amidst all this, there's opportunity, right? I, I, absolutely. I, I keep, you know how long I've been on on your program. I keep saying yeah. silver. Silver has always been the best. It's still 50% off its all time high, and they keep using it for industry. Gold is just stored, but silver is used in industry. It's an industrial metal. I keep looking back, like, why is the price 22 bucks? You know, and as we know, JP Morgan, all those guys got caught with their hand in the till suppressing it. See, it's only bad news if you don't like what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is, yeah, you could. Is, I uh, and, I, and I'm just telling you the the euro dollar index inverted. Every time that has happened throughout history, something bad has happened. And if you listen to guys that you and I respect, like records and Greffin and all this, it's inverted. The Fed cannot stop what's going to happen. So is that good news or bad news, or is that the fact right now? And that's what's the problem with education. Postmodernist education, which is my core debt, was based upon opinion and emotions. So that's why, you know, like I'm, I'm always called a racist. By the way, how would you know if I'm a racist or not? That's your opinion. You know, they, they can call you any name you want, but, but this whole education system is based upon opinion and emotion, not the facts. So the good news is if you check the facts, the facts is silver is 50% off its all time high. What does that mean to you? Well, EVs are coming. That's good news, all right? And silver is God's money. The counterparty to silver is God, not Jesus. I like, oh, boy, that mama had it. But it's, it's, a, it's on the periodic table of elements. It's for real. So it's good news to me. But if you can say, no, 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 Apple's going to keep going up, you're in la-la land. Life is all about perception. Correct. Right. But also, what's the facts, Jack? Robert Kiyosaki, it's always a pleasure. How's your new personal trainer, by the way? Oh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. She's, she's, she hurts me every day. I hate it, but I, I do it. <laughs> For the folks at home, you have to watch the prior episodes to understand that yeah. joke. Uh, yeah. Robert, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, thank you for doing what you do. That is the most important thing. Trust your sources of information. And I don't trust CNN. <laughs> 
Thank you, Robert. Happy holidays again. And thank you all for watching. Keep tuning in to our incredible Outlook 22, 2022 series. We're just getting started with incredible guests like Robert Kiyosaki. And get Robert's new book coming out, Capitalist Manifesto. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Fantastic. That's it uh, for me. Don't forget to sign up for Premier Access at DanielaCamboni.com. We'll see you soon.